What is good? We're back. I'm wrestling with the mic. It was off when I went up. You're a professional. Little fresh crack. He's not. For your pleasure. We're full tripod tonight, but with a guest. Got our guy Robbie Jeffries down there. How you doing, buddy? I'm wonderful. Just, I'm, I'm glad that, that we're, we're bringing the tripod back, even if it isn't the OG tripod. It just they, they ride smoother, you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Better. You could be <laughs> more balanced. You, you could be a little more yeah. intoxicated with three wheels than you can with two. <laughs> Truth. Uh, we got my man Jay Wayne over here. How you doing, Jay? Oh, uh, my daughter took a took a unsolicited shit on the big girl potty today, so I'm doing fantastic. Mm-hmm. How about you? Bingo. Small victories. I'm I'm yeah. doing all right. We're uh, a little more uh, joist repair and subfloor work on the old house <laughs> than I thought was going to happen. So on the existing structure. So you know, par for the course. Here we are. Um, but. Robbie Jeffries kind enough to join us. Uh, if you want to hit him with the with the Twitter and the uh, and and your lovely podcast, uh, tell him tell him about yourself, Robbie. What have what have you won for us today? <laughs> yeah, you can find me at NFL Robbie at NFL Robbie, and I'm part of the Fantasy Authority. So basically, we are you know doing doing a lot of stuff that you guys do. Just uh, we're, we do DFS redraft. We kind of hit try to hit all gamuts. Um, but yeah, we're we're about uh, having deliberation, if you will, a little mm-hmm. bit of back and forth, not uh, the consensus mindset of everybody agrees. And, and, and we found a, a lot of fun with that just because you get to see the uh, the players from a 360 view. So, um, yeah, you can find us at FF underscore authority. Um, it's a good old time over there. So appreciate you guys having me on. I've uh, been listening to you guys for a hot minute here. Um, you guys always put out good stuff. So excited to join that conversation yeah likewise we thank you and uh we we appreciate you we've been we've been chit-chatting through the years for a while so it's 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 cool to have you on and and talk uh through some stuff today so today we're gonna get to uh some running backs of course um Mm -hmm. we're gonna talk old ones and what to do with them young ones who we might like and where to take them and of course you know don't forget those middle-aged guys you know not quite considered tweeners. old but you know or maybe on the way maybe we're middle-aged at this point or just tweening before middle-aged um so i feel for those guys you know that they're you're, you're you're fine one minute and the next minute you're fucking old so simmons is old that's right simmons <laughs> is old um so should have really, got to get got out of the game years ago <laughs> We're going to try to stick to kind of one group, but, you know, if you've listened to the show before, we might might get a little off the rails. We're going to kind of stick to that 26, 27-year-old grouping. Uh, a lot, all, any of these guys are either 26, and, but all of them will either be 27 into the, leading into the season or are, are, will uh, already be 27 at the end of the season with the caveat of Derrick Henry, who will be 28, I believe, January second mm-hmm. something along those lines here let's see i got it right there for your pleasure Boom. fourth idiot uh fourth. Off. yeah there we go uh so kind of just want to have a discussion of what to do with these guys and and how you feel about them so um we're going to kind of maybe do whether or not you have them on your team and what to do with them and then maybe how you would view them adp wise uh for a second and if, if, you, if you're still buying in or if you're if you're out so um what are your thoughts, Robbie? Like, is Dalvin, Kamara, Eckler, Aaron Jones, Zeke, Henry, you know, in the dynasty community, it, it, people already are, are pretty down on running backs in general. And especially once you're hitting this age threshold and, and usage threshold for some of those guys, the Derrick Henrys, uh, the Zekes, uh, the, maybe the Dalvins, you know, it's, it's ready to crumble those guys up and throw them away. And uh, there probably is... Uh, you know, a group of those guys who will have success for, for another year or two, maybe three. Um, You're so hoping for two. What are your, what's your general thoughts on, on a group like that? What, what's your vantage point on those? Yeah, man. I, I think it's interesting because that entire list that you just said have all dealt with injuries pretty recently. Right. And so mm-hmm. if you want to talk about the nail in the coffin for your value in dynasty for running backs, right. It's, it's age and it's your health. Right. 
and you look at Henry hurt out for the year, Zeke banged up with his knee, hasn't produced for the last, what, three or four games. Mm-hmm. Aaron Jones has been hobbled here and there. Definitely not on his touchdown pace that he's seen in his past two years. Right. Uh, Eckler, you know, relatively, honestly, Eckler is that one shining spot out of this group. He, he's uh, been the one that's, uh, you know, been the soft tissue guy, missing missing some games here and there. And he's been the yeah. so far the leader in the clubhouse with health. Yeah. And, and, and couldn't, couldn't score rushing touchdowns, I heard. Yeah. This guy can't score rushing touchdowns, apparently. But uh, fuck that trend. Uh, really excited about his 15 touchdowns already this year. Uh, and then you have Kamara and Dalvin. Uh, Dalvin just – here's what's interesting about Dalvin is I think after his 16 touchdown season last year, people had him – right up there as, as the running back right behind maybe CMC, maybe Camara, And then it was cook. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always thought that that age and just the, the, the injury was something that I found interesting where I didn't have him quite as high in, in dynasty rankings. Um, you know, not saying that what he's done when he's healthy isn't, isn't fantastic. Cause you know what he is when he's healthy. We just haven't seen 16 games of healthy Dalvin cook ever. And so yeah. when we had the this, the two back-to-back seasons, I think he had 12 touchdowns, something like that, 2019, and then the 16 this last year, people are going to react to that. And, hey, this is this is the guy that we we wanted to see for a couple of years now. Hits the injury again. And, and honestly, of the entire group, if you wanted to pick one that I'm kind of worried about, and I think for where he's at right now, and, again, we're looking at this uh, DLF ADP, and this is for November, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'm interested to see if with and this isn't maybe a long term injury, right? It's only expected to be for two or three games. But I'm interested to see if people are just going to have him fall, because like you're saying, everybody's kind of down with all these running back injuries. We haven't even talked about CMC's injury and and some of these other guys. But do all of these guys kind of fall wide receivers start to move in? But I I think Dalvin's the interesting one, because. Especially with the off the field concern, right? We haven't heard any news about that and. You know, and and he's playing still, and we haven't heard any news, so it's kind of quiet. But and and maybe he misses these. He, usually, he misses the fantasy playoffs, so I'm surprised people have been cutting him that much slack. Maybe he actually comes back, misses the two games before the fantasy playoffs, and then comes back and maybe brings you home. And and you're feeling that way. Kamara jumped up, you know, in the off season because he scored six touchdowns in the championship week last yep. year. Yep. Um, but you just don't know. Dalvin Cook is the biggest question mark out of this list for me because of that off the field concern. And, and in the in the off season, it's probably going to get brought back up because he's not playing and there's nothing else to talk about. And then you know, combine that with the age and the injury history and the fact that nobody likes running backs in general, and that that ADP is going down for sure. Yeah, so I'm the same way as you, Jay. I think I think Dalvin's my biggest worry out of this group, even though Henry, you know. It being the 28 year old uh, here shortly, I think that's that's. I'm not going to worry about that one year age difference between some of these guys, but um, he's just the one that has enough question mark marks for me. Where seven's probably going to drop down, but I, I bet out of that that list of guys, he's probably still one of the top names. One of going to be one of the top names off the board out of that list, and that's the one. If I have a dynasty team, I'm I'm probably not not selling at any cost, but I might be shying away from looking to acquire maybe somebody else on that list. I'm, I'm curious how you guys view those names on that list, because I think that's why this discussion is so important, right? These guys are not done by any means. I, I don't know if any of them are done, right? They're, they're only 26, 27, and we've seen running backs have success. I, I think when you look at just most um, most studies, most, most uh, analytical studies done on, on running back age, uh, Mike Taglia did, did a really good one. Um, uh, he did it this summer, actually, and he looked at, I think it was a, over a thousand seasons and he found that a majority of the, the drop off kind of comes out after that age 28 year. And that's when they, they stopped being a uh, running back one. So a top 12 running back at the same percentage as age 27, 26. Once you hit that age 29 <clears throat> season, I think that's where you start to see a drop off. So I'm really interested to see of these groups who we are able to get for another two years because you're hoping for three, right? And, and we've seen some running backs do that. We've seen running backs going to age 30. AP had a great year at 30. Um, I think Thomas Jones and, and going back even further, some guys had good age 31 seasons, but that's just gravy. I think you're just hoping out of this group, who can I get two, maybe three years out of? And and I think for me, Dalvin's one that I'm kind of nervous about. What about you guys? 
Yeah, I, w- I would say the general public is probably going to. Zeke's been dead for like two and a half years, yep. so I think they're 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 ready to kill. They're ready to put him out to pasture, and and Are put you him. In, and no, no, Are no. You? I mean, I I think he's he's fine. I'm not really sure why the Cowboys didn't kind of just shut him down here for a game or two, especially over this like Thanksgiving Thursday stretch. Like, just give him a game or two to to get himself right. Because when he was right, he was good. But as soon as there's another guy in the fold who looks more explosive and does something different it's got to be you know this is the guy i don't know why we're not using him when they just do different things um and i I think zeke can still be fine and and really the other thing that zeke has working against him what is that he has the 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 high carry threshold and the high mileage whereas maybe some of these other guys don't quite have you know derrick henry started off a little slow in his career dalvin's been nicked up a little bit here and there kamara in the beginning of his career wasn't a high touch guy eckler either Aaron Jones, uh, never really been a super, super duper high, t- high touch guy. Uh, so I would say Zeke would probably be the guy that the, the court of public opinion would be down on. I feel like Henry was already kind of there. Everybody was a little scared of him because of the non ball catching deal. And now you got a broken foot on top of that. And he's the oldest. So I could see him being pushed down. Um, for me, I guess I would uh, Eckler and Kamara would be the guys that I would, you know, lean towards being like, I, I, I'm the least afraid of. Um, because that you can get you know more production maybe out of the pass catching uh, prowess of, of those kind of guys and in situations and scenarios where I, I you know I think the Saints are kind of in a weird one off but maybe Russell Wilson ends up there or or you know somebody of of a of a better quarterback ilk ends up down there and Sean Payton can coach him up and Kamara can do his thing and and really just a competent quarterback can make Kamara really good for years and Eckler's vast crazily underpaid in um la right now so he I could should see hold him, out i could see him holding out and they should just give him some some money for a year or two to to keep doing what he's doing because he's really like outside of keenan allen the only bright spot of that offense that's consistent um and, and really helps uh kind of be the engine of of what can go on over there and, and helps that offense score um and just for the people listening on the podcast, we have a graphic up that shows the contract situations of these guys. Austin Eckler's do three mil, like they could cut him with three million dead in twenty two and one point five million dead in twenty three. I think they owe him like five million per year, something like that, if they keep him. So like he he should absolutely get a pay raise based on what he's done and what he still can do. Um, Cook and Kamara have basically the same contract where they could get rid of him in twenty three with six million dead or twenty four with three million dead. Aaron Jones has uh, another year left, and then they can cut him with 6.5 dead in 23, so he could possibly be there two more years. Zeke has a ridiculous contract. like He's there till at least 23, if not 24. Um, and Derrick Henry, they actually have an out with him next year with 6 million dead or 3 in 23, but you know I don't know why they would ever get rid of him. Um, it seems like he's probably going to be able to come back from this injury. Um, to, to- I, I, I would say that Dalvin Cook would – I agree with you that Dalvin Cook would probably – mostly – because of off the field concerns, like you just don't know what is going on there. His, I think ADP is probably going to drop the heaviest. He was already up the highest, and he's probably going to have right. the biggest, uh, you know, discrepancy between where he is this year and or this week or this month. Sorry, and uh, and the following month. Uh, but, but go ahead, Gene. So I, I agree with the Dalvin Cook being like the like the little like the most gives you the most pause uh, just because of the question mark off the field and whatnot. Um, the thing with, like, it's been a while since we had Matt Forte. Like, he put an awesome taste in our mouths as an older dude. He actually, I think, had his best season at age 28. I don't, I can't recall another b- player that's been that good that late or really had, like, their best season ever, which Austin Eckler is kind of having his best season here at 26. I think Eckler and Kamara are the dudes that could potentially be like a Matt Forte where they can, because of the catch passing that they do, continue to hold their value or maybe pass you know, catching. uh catch passing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm a little dyslexic sometimes uh so I, I like i like kamara and eckler uh moving forward aaron jones gives me pause like if i was in on aaron jones for this year but i don't know what's gonna happen with aaron Rodgers, you know and it's probably gonna be okay like they got a good scheme they run the ball well but it's not going to be anything close to what we've seen and he's had kind of a down year started off hot but well, has a chance to finish strong hasn't had quite the uh injury history of dalvin cook just yet but ha- no has but always struggled to banged up really p- 
put together a, a consistent game log of, of always being right. And, you know, you're going to be banged up throughout the NFL season. But Aaron Jones has been one of those guys that, you know, ha- has popped up here and there for some stretches. And, and like you said, you don't know what the future of Aaron Rodgers is, although it seems like as day passes day that it, I feel I feel like it's getting closer and closer to maybe Aaron Rodgers returning for another season in, in Green Bay. Um for me Ooh. personally, I, we've been I, speculating because they took the hit with COVID. They didn't throw him under the bus or be like, he lied to us or anything like that. They took the fine. They took the hit. They didn't say anything about it. But they man. obviously need him. Jordan Love got a start and it wasn't what they were looking to see from him. So that that makes the that could make the organization want to just be like, all right, maybe we should like draft a skill position player for our man A-Rodge and keep him around. So I, I would I would just, with most of those guys in the ADP that was just on the screen, Dalvin at seven, Kamara at 13, Eckler at 17, Aaron Jones at 19, Zeke at 21, Henry's the one at 31 where you're starting to, you know, all right, see, see, intrigue, intrigue. Um, right, but, maybe it's a good time to buy Derrick Henry right now. But, right. But, I mean. For a ship-chasing team. So, ADP-wise, I, I don't think I would be too interested in any of those guys, but if, if you – if where, where they're currently going. And, and I think that's subject to change um, as we move forward. Uh, but if you own these guys currently, what would be your uh, path of, you know, h- how you would handle owning any of those guys? Is this, is this, you know, probably at the point in your league where maybe you're maybe a week away from not being able to trade anymore or that, that has passed, but at the, as the season wraps up, how would you handle, uh, any of those guys that we just talked about on an, on an already owned perspective? Is it get yeah, out? Is uh, it get what you can? Is it, is there a minimum of, of like the, that you see for those guys? I think it's an interesting time. Cause like I said, at the very top, a lot of these guys are kind of hobbled right now. So I don't think you're going to get that true value. And, and honestly, where their ADP lot lands at the end of the season is honestly going to be how they return from some of these injuries, right? Do they shut down Zeke for a little bit and he comes back rips off a couple of a hundred yard games in the playoffs or something like that. Does, um, you know, Aaron Jones uh, kind of take back over most of those carries or are they going to split uh, with him um, and Dylan in the backfield yeah. and Dylan, right. Um, what, what's Dalvin going to do? Is he just going to be out these two weeks or is he going to come back and come back to four? I think that's the question where a lot of these people are going to be, you can't trade him to a contender because a lot of these guys aren't, aren't producing right now. So your trade window with who you'd likely be trading with, it's probably not open. It's mm-hmm. probably going to be, you're, you're running this, you're running this forward one more year. Um, Cause these guys are so hard to trade in the off season. Like if you're trying to look to get younger, that's the hardest time. You, you can't pick uh, up. The that's fair. Fixing. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think you're honestly running it forward one more year and, and you're or at least at, you know, into next season when they're back yes. producing and you forget yep. about the age and he just scored two touchdowns and I need him in my exactly. team. Exactly. Exactly. Kamara comes out that week one, they've got a new quarterback or wins back, whatever they do. And, and he hits just like you're saying, the two touchdowns. Now people are re they're interested again. Cause back to redraft. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's the, like we were saying in the pre-show, it's the Instapot uh, society. What, what have you done for me the last two weeks? You no know, one's so crock pot. I, yeah. Crock pots out. You don't, you don't put something in the, in the, in the uh, crock pot before you leave for work. You, you wait till you get home until you're uh, you, you hungry. All right. 30 minutes. Here we go. Yep. Got to wait. Got it. Yeah, here we go. Call the thirty-minute pot. Let's <laughs> let's do it. Um, so, I think I think that was a good uh, good call on your part. I think it's going to be huge for. I think Austin Eckler will have juice in the off season, but I think uh, if he stays clean here throughout, and I think most of these guys are probably going to play in the playoffs, so that's good for their value. I think as long as they're productive and not injured. Uh, in those playoff games, because we've seen it a million times, that any of those standalone games, uh, which was, you know, just we're going to talk about Javante Williams in a little while. He just stood alone on a night where he already liked him and they he stood alone. Everybody else was wa- everybody's watching that one game and it just magnifies everything. Every sports radio is talking about him. Um, all the fantasy guys are talking about him really magnifies everything. So I think it's a good point of how those guys. Uh, bounce back on their on their value uh, leading into next season, um, but uh, I, I I and I again I do think it's a good point that that it is really hard when you're in everybody's got rookie fever in the off season so I think you may be right and I I think that's probably the best course of action there may be Eckler or somebody who finishes strong that you can get rid of, um, but 
I guess really if I like we have some we have Dalvin Cook in a league. We tried to sell him multiple times uh, all through after we figured we were probably not going to be super competitive like week six, seven on. Uh, couldn't quite get it done. And then, of course, the information comes out on, you know, Potential it's a lot of he said, she said, but we case. don't know exactly what's going to take place. So now, of course, you know, nobody's really in, too invested in, in wanting to take on the big responsibility of Dalvin Cook. And we had Alexander Madison. So we were trying to sell those guys. And really, for me, it comes down to, you know, I've been playing this game long enough now. When we first started this podcast, I would have told you to fuck off. These guys are going to be great. Um, you're not you're not prying them from my head. You guys are getting out too early. This is crazy. Um, and I'm still not like panic mode. All these guys are just going to fall off a cliff. You know, Big Co will talk about, hey, you know, I got bit by Le'Veon Bell. I got bit by David Johnson. I got I got bit by some of these superstars who were up there who, for different reasons, fell off the cliff and 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 didn't return value. You know, in on the back end of their career, um, and that sucks. But it's not necessarily the reason to get out. But again, I've been playing this game for long enough to know that these are kind of your reset chips as well like if, if you don't if you don't figure out when is the time to get out like if you're competing in that season then you should you know absolutely hang on to him and especially if you think your team's built for another run next year then you hang on but if, if you're not then then now you start going our, our kind of theory was hey i'm gonna try to go get a first a second and then i'm gonna go after like a jk dobbins who's on ir so i'm, I'm gonna sell dalvin cook to a contender who's not getting anything from a guy that they paid but you're in win now mode and and in bigger money leagues where you're trying to win that fucking money when things are clicking and you got lightning in a bottle hey all of a sudden jk dobbins who isn't helping me out is is you know expendable expendable for dalvin cook who is is scoring me you know 20 some fantasy points a game um so i do see that picture a lot clearer now and i understand that side of things that these are the big reset chip that you hold in your pocket because you know like you said dalvin cook alvin kamara ezekiel elliott those are all those were all startup first round picks for the most part this year i mean zeke probably fell into the second um and then aaron jones and henry were probably in the second ish round but th those are those are big chips to kind of reset and 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 keep you from rebuilding because it's like you can either get out you know, kind of a year ish early, or you can not get full value and not be able to reset. Cause if I can get a first or two firsts and another running back, then I can take those two firsts and then another running back and go buy the 22 year old running back that I really want now anyway. So I, I can kind of see both sides to, to the, the, the tale of where before younger Casey would have been like, nah, fuck that. Like these are my guys. I'm gonna ride out with this, but the, these these are your chips to helping a, a not the reset process the rebuild process take quite as long and I can I can get back to the the 22 21 23 year old running back who uh, you know you're gonna get four more years out of yeah I think that's where that that's where you you make that rebuild so quick but it's also and this is why we're having that conversation it's also where you can get into trouble right like I think the the guys that that might be talked about in that vein is let's say you did that two years ago with a, a Miles Sanders, uh, yeah. twenty you know uh, another first and a second or something like that, and so that's why I see both sides of it as well. Where I'm just going to take the other side of the coin from you and just say, would would you rather just run it with with Eckler for two maybe three more years? You're you're you you know you're going to eventually hit that cliff earlier than the first and, and whatever Miles Sanders can get you, but you know, you're at least going to be getting that, that top level uh, result from, from an Eckler uh, Camara. Yeah. Those are the two names that you hit, right? Cause of their pass catching chops and, or catch passing chops either way. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think it's, it's that, and that's why I wanted to have that conversation is that Camara Eckler, I, I completely agree with those two names. And, and the last one I throw out is just the one you kind of started with is Zeke is, and I just think the community is going to push him down so far and, and I don't know if we – part of the reason they're going to push him down is because they look at that that carry total and they're going to say, you know, 1,500 carries. That is so many for a running back. You know, he's he has so much, uh, you know, tread on the tires. And I, I think it's interesting because if you look back at a lot of these backs, and I get it, football's changed a lot, that we're not running as much. But we had so many running backs that got over 2,000 carries, like Jerome Bettis, LaDainian Tomlinson. And I, I get it, Zeke's going to be somewhere Frank in between. Gore. He's not – 
Frank Gore. Like, there's so many more carries under this guy, and, and I don't want people to look at the knee sprain that he has this year and and, the, and playing through the it. Ankle. And he's playing, and, and through, playing it. through it. And they knock him. If and you read still, a Roto World article, they can't wait to trash him on how uh, he's not busting off plays and he's not breaking tackles and. Pollard is, and it's just like they're not the same player. They're not seeing the same defense, and he's playing banged up. They probably should have held him out, but they didn't. They need him. Like, they need him. Cowboys haven't looked the yeah. same since he's been banged up. Yeah. No, and, and I agree. And so if if, if he, that's a guy that, that people are down on, that's a guy that I'm looking to to maybe trade that. that and maybe it's not a first, a, a young player and a second, but a, a trade that makes sense where – Hey, I'm not. I'm unsure on this guy. I don't know if he's going to be the real deal. And a, a first, if I'm competing, it's going to be a late first, right? And then I get Zeke, who, in my opinion, most most years for for the next two or three years, most games, he's going to be that healthy Zeke. Um, even if he's split with Pollard, he's shown that he can still be, uh, which is fine. Like you, one. who yeah. isn't, and you kind of need it now. Like you just need yeah. you need somebody to take the some of the uh, load off your shoulder, and they're great for each other. They're complementary of one another. Uh, which nobody yep. can seem to – it's got to be one or the other. It can't be that this guy works with that guy. Um, but I think it's I think it's contextual, just like just about anything else in Dynasty, like where your team stands, what it looks like. Um, if you feel good about your team moving forward, then, uh, you know, yeah, let's roll with Eckler for, for a couple more years. If you're uh, looking like you're going to kind of fall apart a little bit, um, you know, Go ahead and, and move on a year early than 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 the year late. Like I, I literally just traded Devontae Adams. I've been kicking mm, back and forth yeah. with this team that I have. Um was was really good in the beginning of the season, had the most points in the league for a while, then just for whatever reason couldn't put it all together. It was always always something was amiss. Like couldn't quite get it and and um so you know, you're faced with the decision, well, am I gonna make the playoffs this year? I'm like right there on the edge. Um, and if I get in, certainly I could, you know, I've won the championship from sixth place before for sure. Um, but you know, you gotta look at yourself. I got four or five good running backs that I really like that are young. Um, I got a bunch of young wide receivers and Devontae Adams and Mike Evans. And it's like, all right, well, I probably wasn't quite ready to win this year, but maybe I could have. But I got out a year early, I got two firsts, a second, and Alexander Madison, which I think my thought was that in Madison's always kind of been one of those guys that had a cult following that everybody really liked that whenever it is time for those two to split up that I think I could grab another first whenever that happens, whenever that initial surge happens when Madison breaks off on its own, whether he resigns with the Vikings and Dalvin doesn't or, or he resigns somewhere else thinking that, all right, all of a sudden I got three firsts and a second uh, for yeah. Devonte Adams, and maybe it was a year early because I traded him to a contender. Maybe he's going to help him win. Maybe he could have helped me win. But um, you know, it's just I felt like I wanted to just kind of re. I, I had a really nice stable of backs, and I just wanted to reset my wide receiver room. I like, you know, I got Rondell Moore's and Tonys and St. Browns, and you know, I got I loaded up on guys from this class um, and. You know, now I'm going to have a chance to, uh, through the next two classes, I have, you know, five or six first round picks already. Um, so, you know, I, I could see it both ways. And I think it's contextual to, to how your team's built and where it's going. Yeah, I like it. You All got right. anything uh, to add, Robbie, before we move on? No, I think just to put a bow on it, because, right, everyone's like, oh, man, they just threw a lot at it. I think it's at least my general feeling. And I think I'm going to kind of summarize for you guys. Well, I think. We, we don't think the end is, is here for any of those guys, right? 26, even 27 is not the age that they're no. done. It's just there's there's certain feelings with some, and if the price is right, like your Devontae Adams trade, if the price is right, it makes sense for your team. Absolutely do it. If not, there's certain guys that are going to be league winners for the next two or three years. And so um, identify how you like, and we kind of said what we like. Identify on your roster what the what the, who those guys are. Or I know you guys have your, 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 your Patreon. Uh, do a little plug here reach out to these guys, chat with them about it because they'll give you those thoughts on, on all these guys. So For I sure. think to put it in a, in, a, in a bow, none of these guys are done. We're not saying that at all. It's just sometimes it might make sense to get out uh, that year early. Yeah, I like it. All right, well, let's go ahead and just wrap this episode up. Uh, we're going to go hit another discussion 
uh, with Robbie. Appreciate you joining us, Robbie. You can find him at NFL Robbie, right? Did I get oh, that. Nailed it. And uh, nailed you it. can also find his podcast at at the Fantasy, Fantasy Authority. Authority. And uh, check check out there, doing a lot of good stuff. Um, appreciate you joining us. If you're listening on the podcast, hit us with a five star review. If you're listening and, on uh, YouTube, hit us with that subby. Let me get a scribey. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>